Welcome back, my friends. So happy you're here. Thank you for joining. Quest for you. It's episode 142. And possibly I left on a depressing note with my last episode, if you listen to it. Maybe you're feeling a little bit discouraged because you don't know what to buy and what to eat in order to get to your health and weight goals this year. And that is why I titled this episode differently. The ease of being healthy. Not just to make you feel better, but because there is a way out of the maze of the food crisis we often find ourselves in. It just may take a little bit more work in some direction. So my goal today is this. I will not propose a diet that you should follow, but I will give you some guidelines to keep in mind as you undertake this journey to a healthier you. And I hope you do have health in mind as you start out this year. Maybe it's not a diet. Maybe it's not even weight loss. That's okay. But I can never speak enough about how a more conscious approach to food has helped me to become happier, more productive, and better looking. I realize that our food journeys often start out like all our other journeys. We see problems and we decide to address them. Maybe we've accumulated excess weight or we don't feel so good. Our work suffers because we can't focus for extended periods of time. I've experienced all of these. But this healthy journey is about so much more. Weight loss is a nice side effect. But good physical and mental health, focus and energy, physical fitness, these should be our baseline. The fact that we have excess weight, that we feel sluggish and unmotivated, that we have illnesses like diabetes, autoimmune diseases, skin rashes and allergies, those just mean that there is a problem and these are the signal to the problem. And a lot of the problems we have can be traced back to the food we eat. Food keeps us alive, but it also affects how alive we feel. It feels good to provide our body with food when we're hungry. But it's also important to pay attention to how we feel after we're full. It's a good idea to monitor calorie intake as a means to keep slim. But it's even more critical to pay attention to the type of calories you consume. There is a difference between filling up your body and nourishing your body. And that is my first guideline for you. Pay more attention to the food you consume and how it makes you feel. And this is easier than people think. It just requires you to become a little bit more aware. Begin looking at food in a different way. Most people look at it as filler that reduces hunger. They feel the pangs and they run out and pick up something. I did this for most of my life. Sure, any food satisfies hunger after a certain amount is consumed, but that doesn't mean it was nourishing for you. When you change the question from what should I eat to what nourishes me, then your awareness antennas are up. Now you are more mindful. And just being more alert, you may notice a few things. Begin to look at how food makes you feel right after you eat, maybe a couple hours later, or even if you don't eat and skip a meal. Experiment and make a few changes over the course of a week just so you can notice the difference. Play with your eating times, with the amounts that you eat, with the speed that you eat, and most importantly, the kind of foods you eat. I, for example, noticed a few years ago that every time I had a donut or something really sugary like a cupcake, which was food that I never really consumed much in the past, but I remember I started a new job where there was always a celebration going on and sweet things were around more than I was used to. So every time I ate it, I felt really, really sluggish after the initial sugar spike. And sometimes I even got headaches and my motivation to go to the gym after work was really, really low. So check how you feel after certain foods. Have you had some changes in your diet lately? More catered lunches or restaurant food than normal? Have you started a new diet lately? How does it make you feel? When I first eased out of consuming refined carbs, such as bread and pasta, I replaced them with legumes. I handle legumes well but not everyone does. 
I recommended them multiple times to my friend, but she always told me she cannot eat them. This is why you can ditch the articles about the foods that you must eat. Not everybody handles food the same way. The chemistry in your body is unique to you. The enzymes that break down your food are a unique mix of little critters that don't function according to a set standard. And this is also why you need to experiment a little bit. Try switching out your lunch sandwich and go with a salad for a week. Do you notice any changes? And then maybe switch back to your sandwich. Now what do you notice? Do this with the foods that you think you want to either introduce to your diet or eliminate. And usually we have a hunch for what makes us feel better or worse. I'm not gluten intolerant. However, I have eliminated all refined starches from my diet, with a few minor exceptions once in a while. So if I go and eat a huge sandwich right now, I will be miserable. My body has adjusted. But more than that, by reacting this way, my body tells me that this food is not good for me, and never was. Gluten sensitivity or not, I simply don't feel well after eating it. So always start with yourself. Pay attention to your body before you blindly shop for the items that the article or the book told you to get. And also know that our bodies adjust. Mine adjusted fine to living without refined carbs. Yours may have adjusted to a lot of carbs and you don't see any issues. But then look deeper. Are you overweight? Are you without energy by 6 p.m. to fit a workout in? Do you have headaches? Do you have a hard time focusing after lunch? Look at these and other signs. Sugar spikes, reduced energy, sluggishness, brain fog, constipation, skin reactions, basically anything that should work or look normal and that doesn't. Your body will tell you. It is really smart. You can go for tests if you want, but more often than not, they tell you what you already know anyway. And why take medicine or cover up with creams if you can eliminate the condition by simply removing the food from your diet or changing your eating habits? This step is especially important before you hop on any specific diet bandwagon. Reducing your caloric intake is one thing, but deciding to eat a very limited diet that requires you to eat certain foods, I would first experiment and see how those foods make you feel. Before you go out searching for a diet that addresses your need to be healthier, listen to my second guideline. It's very simple. The closer your food is to its natural state, the healthier it will be for you. Your body is a natural organism. Without going into basic biology here, because we don't have the time, just think about what makes common sense. The foods your body will be best able to handle are natural foods. Natural foods are full of good ingredients that the body busily shovels away for absorption by your blood and organs. Highly processed foods, on the other hand, those with tons of ingredients, use five as a guideline. So those with more, they pose several issues. They take energy by your body to break down. Energy is not bad. We want the body to work because that burns calories. But trying to figure out what to do with all the fake ingredients and harmful chemicals that are often added to the processed foods to keep them fresh and tasty, those are a problem for your body. There are often too many of them in these foods, causing your body to have a really difficult time. So I go back to see how you feel and there lies your answer. Processed foods also lack the basic nutrients your body needs in order to function well. The micronutrients like antioxidants and vitamins, along with omega-3 fatty acids. And, very important, soluble and insoluble fiber is often lacking as well. Dietary fiber forms the basis to keep good bacteria in your gut, which is directly related to your metabolic health. Staying close to foods that are minimally processed relieves you of the headaches of trying to decipher ingredients on nutrition labels. In tomorrow's episode, I'll give you a few more specific guidelines on natural foods because this episode is already getting really long. For now, just keep in mind that the closer your food looks to its natural state, the better it is for you. 
If you do buy packaged foods, look at the ingredients. Don't just use calories as your guideline. A can of diet soda has zero calories, but it also has no nutritional value. Why stress your body with something it doesn't know what it is? And neither do you. Really, do you know where this came from? Do you know the big factory it was made in? What did it look like? We don't know. So make sure you can identify the ingredients as something that is, again, a whole food by itself. So to review quickly. Observe how you feel and then maximize the nutritional value of everything you eat by choosing minimally processed foods. But remember my legume example. Not all natural foods are necessarily well received by your body. So always be aware and experiment and this step will never go away and I will keep repeating it. You want to live a healthy and energetic life? Then you need to be aware of what you put into your mouth. Which leads me to my last guideline. And this one combines the first two guidelines. The buck stops with you. What do I mean with that? It's very simple. You control the food you consume. I realize we cannot go out and hunt and fish our own food. At least most of us can't. So we rely on others to do all the groundwork for us. But you can be informed. And this is where the work comes in that I mentioned in yesterday's episode. We still need to put in the work to find out the details about our food. Where did it come from? What do the ingredients mean? And what is good for me? Inform yourself if you are serious. And you should be somewhat serious. How often are you trusting someone else with your nutrition? Restaurants, food manufacturers, bakeries and other companies that make food. Every time you turn over food preparation to someone else, you give up control. What did your restaurant use in preparing that lasagna? Is that green oil in the bottle on your table really olive oil? I realize it gets very granular, but all I want to encourage you to do is this. Don't just use your taste buds as a judge when you eat. They can be manipulated with all sorts of sweet and salty little tricks. Be informed and stay aware. And follow my second guideline. The closer it looks to its origin, the less others can mess it up. Anytime ingredients are added, your work is getting harder. So the best advice is keep it simple. Eating natural and whole foods makes your life easier and healthier. So those are my recommendations. I hope these help you as a general guideline for the food, for the food that you consume. Even if you are looking at a particular diet, or you're thinking about replacing certain foods in your diet. Maybe you're now a bit clear on some base criteria that you can use. So the Pop-Tart diet, <laughs> maybe not a good idea, but I'm sure you already know this. And as a last piece of advice, don't let your diet decisions be calorie driven alone. Health should always come first, then calories. The good news is this, Fresh veggies are probably the purest and healthiest foods you can eat. And they are also, for the most part, low in calories. So start there. Build your diet and weight loss plan around whole and natural ingredients, and you won't go wrong. They're not only good for you on the inside, but also on the outside. And it will reflect in your overall health and well-being. And this is what we all should strive for much love today and I'll talk to you tomorrow.